the rescue. Well, welcome to um, Patapsco and Lodge Forest United Methodist Churches. I'm Reverend Katie Grover, and we are located in East Baltimore County, Maryland, uh, and it is a joy to be here today uh, as we celebrate Ascension Sunday, um, the, the day to commemorate, um, to honor, uh, to worship, and, and to remember uh, when Jesus uh, rose into heaven and was ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. Uh, just a few announcements one is we are doing our best with technology, okay? And I recognize that there are problems from time to time. And sometimes, though, I think the problems are on your end and not our end. So um, just to say that, because, uh, you know, we get some feedback and we're like, well, wait a minute, everything seemed fine. So anyway, um, but uh, there, there may be a day soon uh, that we are able to gather back together in the building. You all have been being the church from the, from the very first Sunday, and um, I have just been so thankful uh, for that and for the ways that you all have stepped up. You know, these are just addresses, you know, 2715 and 7800. Um, you all are the church, and so um, praise be to God. And we will still continue uh, to figure out how to incorporate technology as, as we continue to worship for those um, who, who don't, do not feel comfortable or are not able uh, to join us uh, in the building. And, and there's a lot of things to work out, and we need help. Uh, I did get a phone call yesterday uh, from someone uh, trying to help us determine, you know, what happens when we can see 30 people and 31 shows up, uh, and how we can um, help make determinations. Some churches are doing, like, sign-up genius for their seats, but, but I think we have just gotten you all to come on this techno I'm not going to add one more technological things for, thing for you all to figure out, uh, but all, all of that to say, we'll also need people to, like after service, you know, wipe everything down, and, um, and maybe before service, you know, do those things, though, uh, that should definitely be done far in advance. So, and, and also, you know, uh, let us know what will make you comfortable to return. Uh, let us know what you're going like, oh, no way, I'm never coming back in the building if we... Um, and if we try to do outdoor services, definitely set up and, and some equipment and, and then trying to decide what do we do when it's 90 degrees out, right? Uh, no one wants that. So um, we're all in this, uh, you know, the, the line is we are all in this together. Well, we have always been in this together as um, the body of Christ. So, um, and then the only, only other announcement I would have is just to remember our feeding ministries and um, Right now, we're not passing anything out to drink, and, and so, um, you know, if now there are, uh, there, there is water in the stores, uh, uh, you know, and so that would be a, a nice addition. Um, I did have one more announcement. Uh, if you are out shopping, I've noticed there is bleach now in the stores, but, but if there's cleaner, and make sure it says disinfectant, not like um, deodorizer and cleaner, uh, but a disinfectant. If you think about grabbing one more uh, for the church, uh, that would be much appreciated to make sure we continue to have supplies. Uh, also, isopropyl alcohol uh, works as well. So uh, with all of that said, uh, we will continue in worship. I uh, will be singing Life Song. Uh, the lyrics will be on the screen uh, for you all uh, on Zoom. Uh, and so let us uh, make a joyful noise uh, unto the Lord. Such mouth. 
Okay. Reading the Nicene Creed. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I have a chord here, it's kind of dangerous. That is a piece of the Nicene Creed, uh, the first one um, that the church used to state uh, their beliefs. And uh, Sheila shared the part, our beliefs about Jesus Christ. Uh, and so, um, are there any children here today? Any, any, any? All right, we gotta start recruiting them to come back. Yeah. I try to do the children's sermon in the beginning uh, so that they can uh, check out uh, if, if they'd like. So, um, it is time now uh, to indeed receive our offering, uh, our offering of you. <laughs> uh, we are called in Romans to, um, to offer ourselves to God, to be that living sacrifice, um, sacrificing um, the, the worldly things uh, so that we can indeed... Um, be, it says to know the perfect will of God. Now, our offering is not just our, our money, though, um, though that is, is a means by which we indeed worship, uh, by which we show our faith and trust in Christ. Uh, and um, and it's, it's about obedience. And so uh, giving back God a, a, just a small portion of what we have been blessed with. Uh, but uh, the offering also includes you, uh, your time, uh, your talents, and your treasures. And, and we um, always need them. The church always needs them. And especially uh, in this time, a uh, time where we're able to share the gospel uh, across the world realistically uh, and also in our communities. And so uh, during these moments, uh, if you would... Um, if you would pray and if you would consider indeed how uh, you can offer yourselves, how you can offer your treasures uh, on the Zoom screen, uh, it shows you uh, about giving online. And in Patapsco people, you can also take part in that. Our Lodge Forest folks are, are figuring uh, those offerings out, but we're all in this together again. Uh, also, you can text or, or you can mail uh, to the churches. Uh, Lodge Forest does now uh, have a lockbox uh, and a slot. Um, so. Uh, that is safe, or you can look up Donna's uh, address in the um, directory uh, and mail it there as well. Uh, my Facebook people, I, I'm going to post how you all can give uh, as well. So, um, so let us be in prayer about what um, God is calling us to give. as well as uh, lifting up 
uh, our concerns and our praises. So um, uh, let us pray. Almighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, great physician, our healer, our friend, our redeemer, we come to you and we know that you are mighty. We know that you are sovereign. We know that there is nothing uh, that slips uh, your, your mind, your knowledge, and that you indeed are holding all of us in your hands. God, we lift up uh, those around this world that are um, suffering from COVID-19. Uh, we pray, Lord, for, um, for your breath to fill their lungs, uh, for uh, your healing power to release them. Uh, God, but we recognize that there are people that are um, suffering from more than just this virus. So we lift them up, Lord. We pray for those that, um, that are dealing with cancer, chase those cells out of their bodies. We recognize that there are those that, that, that where their hearts are not beating as they ought, uh, where their bones are broken and need to be mended. Lord, where, um, where bacteria attacks, where, where malformation of our cells attack. Lord, people who are dealing with, with um, uh, issues of memory, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's. And, and God, we pray that those nerve synapses will fire as they ought. And God, we know that you continue to work in and through them. God, we lift up those who are grieving, uh, grieving the loss of a loved one, a neighbor, a friend, uh, grieving the loss of a job, the, the loss of, of the ability to, to hug grandchildren and hug friends and, and to gather together uh, in the spaces that were made for worship. Uh, God, we do indeed give you thanks uh, give you thanks uh, for these spaces, but more than that, give you thanks for your spirit and the way that you have um, allowed us uh, to continue to be the church, uh, to be in ministry, to worship together. And God, continue, uh, continue to show us how. Continue to uh, provide for us the means, uh, the means for, uh, for distributing food, the means for caring for children, the means by which we worship. Uh, Lord, uh, we do also come to you, uh, and we lay at your feet our struggles. We lay at your feet the, the, missed, the missed celebrations, weddings, and, and birthdays, and graduations, and all of those things that we've looked forward to. And Lord, we lay at your feet even the disappointment and, and means by which we can't minister to, to children, at least not yet. But God, we know. Uh, we know that tomorrow... Uh, you could sweep through this nation, you could sweep through this world, and, and COVID-19 could no longer exist. Lord, let us have faith and trust uh, that you would indeed do that. And Lord, I pray uh, your blessing on, on each person gathered here to worship, on each person uh, who will worship later. And God, may you um, protect them. Uh, may you uh, sing your songs of love and praise uh, and, and let them open their ears to hear it. Uh, God, uh, you are mighty and, um, and we love you and we praise your name and there's not enough words. Uh, there would not be enough time uh, to give you all the praise that you are due. So Lord, come, Holy Spirit, fill us, fill these places uh, and God, may our worship uh, be pleasing to you. And Lord, in the strength of being called your beloved sons and daughters, brother and sister to Christ, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Fun fact. Did you know that um, 20 seconds praying the Lord's Prayer, you can wash your hands. And so it's a good place to continue to pray it because we recognize it is indeed the perfect prayer. I have to hit a button on Facebook, and I need to just start being transparent with that instead of trying to sneak around and do it. So hold on. Okay. This is please try again. All right. Uh, okay. Okay, press.
press the button. Oh, there we go. Um, oh, I don't want a description. This is amusing, I know. So as we prepare to hear uh, the scripture read, uh, I invite you uh, to grab a hold of your Bibles. And um, I'm going to have to start giving Alexia the scripture reference to put in the, um, to put in the chat before um, service starts. Not to put on the screen, uh, but for you all to open your Bibles, the Word of God, um, the, uh, the bread of life, and our sword. Um, so uh, if you would repeat after me. They're all unmuted. This is going to be fun. They're all unmuted. This is fun. Okay. Everyone's unmuted now. Oh, I got it. Okay, ready? Uh, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive. Incorruptible, indestructible. Ever living seed of the word of God. God. I will never be the same. Never be the same. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. Never be the same. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. Acts chapter one. I think 1 through 11 is what we'll be reading. Uh, Acts is in the New Testament, after the four Gospels. Um, and so it's a pretty big book. So, um, and you can use your table of contents. There's nothing wrong with that. Oops, i got to unmute me. Maybe I need to mute everyone, but you're going to have to unmute. Yeah, I, I did that, and then apparently... Well, it, I had to... Unmute everyone so we could hear you. That's totally so. fine. I got it. I'm ready. Okay, I think we're good. Um, yep. All right, so Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Uh, and, um, of course, with different translations, there will be different pieces, but it's all, uh, it's all the Word of God, and it's all been done very carefully. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once, when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has a time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, The Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. Uh, what, the, indes the indestructible, incorruptible word of God uh, for us this day, for all people everywhere. Thanks 
be to God. Again, uh, Laura's um, deceased husband had made me this giant podium, uh, and so I've got to kind of uh, work with the one I have. So. All right. I have a pop quiz for you today. You guys ready? Anybody study? So, um, first question, what are clouds made of? Um, anybody? No, okay. Condensation. We got them here answering condensation. Condensation. Uh, the tiny droplets of frozen crystals of water. How do they form? Anybody, anybody? You can like raise your hand and then she can unmute you if you have the answer. Okay. Well, warm air rises. Uh, and it cools down, and the water vapor then turns into droplets of water or ice, and as more air cools down, more droplets, and they eventually become a cloud. Okay. Well, how fast can a cloud travel? Anybody, anybody? Okay. Um, the high-level cirrus clouds uh, may travel at speeds up to 100 miles per hour. That's like, wow. Okay. So, um, uh, what do clouds weigh, those fluffy things? Anybody, anybody? Okay. Um, well, uh, even though clouds float, uh, a single cumulus cloud uh, can weigh hundreds of tons. Okay. A ton is 2,000 pounds. Uh, that's a pretty heavy thing, right? So, uh, now do you know your types of clouds, possibly? Uh, the cirrus cloud? Okay. Uh, they're high-level clouds, they're thin and wispy, and they appear during good weather. Uh, how about the stratus clouds? Anybody, anybody? Okay. <laughs> they're low-level clouds, and they are flat, and they tend to cover much of the sky. Uh, gray in color, and they might produce rain or drizzle. Uh, we've uh, seen that the last couple of days. How about the cumulus clouds? Anybody, anybody? Okay. Um, they are low to mid-level clouds. Uh, they're those big, white, puffy ones, uh, the ones that you look at and you find, you know, shapes in those, uh, and they usually mean good weather. Uh, and how about the cumulonimbus clouds? Anybody, anybody? <laughs> you didn't know you were going to have a science test today, did you? Um, well, they are very tall clouds. They span all the way from low level to high level. Uh, they can cause violent thunderstorms with heavy rain, hail, and even tornadoes. Uh, you don't want to run into them. So uh, Now, I, 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 I still have a few more um, cloud questions. What type of cloud formed the pillar of clouds uh, that led the Israelites through the wilderness? Well, what type of cloud covered Mount Sinai when Moses received the Ten Commandments? What type of cloud filled the tabernacle and then later the temple? Okay. Uh, what type of cloud surrounded Jesus and Moses and Elijah uh, when they went up on the Mount of Transfiguration? Okay. Uh, what type of cloud uh, do we find lifting Jesus into the heavens uh, that, that we read about in today's scripture? Now, on what type of cloud will Jesus return? All right, we've aced that one, haven't we? So, so um, now, now, for those last questions, uh, the answer is the same. Each of those clouds, tabernacle, temple, Ten Commandments, pillar of cloud, Jesus. Um, so, uh, that is a cloud that comes... Uh, that, that cloud comes from glory. It is glory. It is the, the very presence of God. And it probably didn't look anything like we uh, put in the pictures, probably not that fluffy white cumulus cloud, uh, but brighter than all get out. Uh, and so imagine what the very presence of God uh, would look like. Now, I always like to make this um, comparison. For those of you who have seen uh, Indiana Jones and, the, um, and Raiders of the Lost Ark, when they open the ark, like, uh, you know, their faces melt and, and those kinds of things. They can't look at it. And, and 
I mean, not that God would melt faces, but just the very presence of God, of the holiness of God in which we come face to face with. So, well, we didn't do so well on that part of the pop quiz, but, but there's a few more questions. I, and Thursday somethings, you can't answer these, okay? All right, nod your head. All right, okay. So, um, well, what was Thursday? Well, what, what is it that was Thursday? Why, why is it important? Well, we are about to get the answers uh, to those questions. We're going to see what was next. We've been asking that question, what's next? We're going to see what's next for the resurrected Christ. Uh, see what's next for us. So, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And Christ is for us. But first, uh, let us center ourselves in prayer. Lord Jesus, our strong tower, our refuge, our hope, our Prince of Peace, we come to you now in these moments, and we pray to continue to meet with you in the prayers and in the songs, in the scriptures and in the proclamation, in the bread and in the cup, and in each of the places we have gathered, spaces claimed in these moments as a sanctuary. Holy Spirit, descend upon us in power. Fill us, Lord. Focus us. Speak to us. Speak in us. Speak to me. Speak in me. In your power, Holy Spirit, speak through me. And if I try to get in the way, speak in spite of me. May, the wor may my words, may our thoughts be acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay. The last three questions. Thursday. It was May 21st, 2020, 67 days since we've gathered in our sanctuaries, today 70. Uh, it's 40 days after Easter, and it's Ascension Day, the Feast of the Ascension. Did y'all know that? Well, obviously not. You didn't answer the questions earlier. So, uh, Ascension Day, then, what is that? Well, it's the day, like I said at the beginning, where we remember and celebrate Jesus ascending into heaven and being seated at the right hand of God the Father. We heard this in, in the Nicene Creed, uh, the piece of the Nicene Creed that Sheila shared with us this morning, sharing our beliefs about what Jesus did, who he was, and his, and his ascending into heaven, being seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, um, Jesus' ascension, again, 40 days after Easter. And back when we began this quarantine, uh, which literally means 40 days, uh, we spoke about the importance of 40. Uh, we find it in Scripture over and over again. Uh, Jesus, uh, 40 days in the wilderness, 40 days of, of rain with Noah, uh, 40 years in the wilderness, uh, the, the Israelites um, getting the slavery out of them from Egypt as they prepared to go to the promised land. Be it 40 days or 40 years, the, that number is associated um, with uh, the new developments in God's mighty acts, especially in God's mighty acts of salvation. And these 40 days that, that Jesus spent uh, as the resurrected Christ on earth is no different. So uh, we read, well, Sheila read, and hopefully y'all read in, in your Bibles, uh, that during those 40 days, uh, Jesus uh, appeared to the, the apostles and then over 500, we find that in 1 Corinthians 15, I think so, Second, anyway. We find it in Corinthians, Paul shares with us that, that Jesus appeared to, to more than 500. Jesus had to prove uh, over and over again that he wasn't a ghost, he wasn't a hallucination, he indeed was in a resurrected body. Uh, he, he most often did this by eating. Uh, because ghosts don't eat. And uh, this, too, he, he continued to teach. Uh, Acts 1 says he continued to teach about the kingdom of God. And we talked about Jesus' bucket list when he had only one week left on earth. Uh, and think about his, his bucket list with 40 days as the resurrected Christ, the last time he would be on earth with his apostles until he returned again uh, to judge the living and the dead. So, uh, ding, 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 the kingdom of God must be something that we pay careful attention to. 
And then at the end of these 40 days, Jesus blessed and then commissioned his followers to be witnesses, to tell about him everywhere to the ends of the earth. If they didn't do that, we wouldn't know about Jesus, we wouldn't be here right now, and we wouldn't have a means by which to experience everlasting and abundant life, uh, forgiven and free and, and, and redeemed uh, and made um, right with God. So uh, the gospel message that uh, Jesus shared, uh, told his followers to share in the, um, in the gospel of Luke is that there is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. Uh, and that could be a whole sermon in itself. But then we read that Jesus is taken up into heaven in a cloud. And as recorded in the gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, look, I'm coming back the same way in glory, in the very presence of God, as the very presence of God. So the apostles watched him ascend for as long as they could see him. Uh, just, you know, when we let a balloon off in the air. But you should not be letting balloons off in the air. It's not good for the environment. Uh, but you know, you just gaze into the sky until it indeed disappears. But then two men dressed in white appeared. And you know, th those apostles had to just finally be prepared for, for anything. You know, Jesus walking through walls and the empty tomb. And so now two men dressed in white appear. And they ask what seems like a, a dumb question. Why are you standing there looking into the heavens? Uh, now, this question might not have uh, been so dumb if they had followed with, uh, you're not supposed to be stargazers, you're supposed to be witnesses. So why are you looking to the heavens? And similarly, you might remember that two men dressed in white appeared to the women uh, at the empty tomb, and they said, well, why are you looking for the living among the dead? It's a, it's a graveyard. Uh, and that might have been a better question if they had followed up with, Jesus has risen just as he said he would. And now for the third question. Why is Ascension Day, why is the Feast of Ascension important? Now, uh, hold on to your hats. I've got 68 pages of notes. I do, really. Um, so you ready? <laughs> you have lunch plans? You're supposed to stay at home anyway. No, um, I, I won't be going through all 68 pages not today, but we might hit them all at some point in time. Uh, and uh, these 68 pages, uh, they describe in many ways how the day of ascension is important. Important enough not just to skip over. Actually, it is one of the uh, six holy days uh, where the Roman Catholic Church is required to have Mass. But in that, dare I say, Ascension Day is just as important as Christmas. Just as important as Holy Thursday. Just as important as Good Friday. Just as important as Easter. Now, how many of you were aware of Ascension Day? I got a few hands raised. I, I'm not swiping the screen, but, um, but yeah. How many of you all have ever celebrated it? Yeah. <laughs> On the Sunday after the Thursday. Uh, and if the pastor said something about it and you were tuned in. But nonetheless, uh, I, I will say, as I went through the 68 pages and, and each time as I, as I was writing things down, I thought, oh, this is the message for today. This is the message for today. Uh, and so I did stop and, and I prayed and I said, okay, God, uh, what is it that your people need to hear today? What do they need to hear to be fed, to be encouraged, to be challenged <laughs> What do you all need to be fed to know God's love and, to, um, and for us to worship well, and to give God all the glory and honor and praise? So, here we go. But before I uh, dive into answering this question, why Ascension Day, uh, why Jesus ascending into heaven is very important, I do want to offer my thanks uh, to Dr. Steve Siemens, one of my professors uh, and, and friends, and uh, he has really spent some time uh, on uh, why the ascension is important. And so um, uh, I, I want to give uh, credit uh, for him, credit to him uh, for enlightening me. And, and he actually wrote a, a book, and I've read it because it's a skinny book. Remember, I like skinny books. So, um, well, let us start this journey into the Holy Day just, just with a cute story. Uh, it is one that Dr. Siemens has told. 
Now there was a father and son, and, and they were sitting and they were watching the sunset. It was brilliant, you know, the, the oranges and, and reds and the pinks and the purples um, ascending into the blue sky as it, as it became dark, and that big ball of the sun um, sinking below the horizon. The, the little boy looks at his dad and says, oh, wow, you know, this is a beautiful painting, a painting that God uh, did with his left hand. The father was like, huh? His left hand? What, like, why? Why do you say that? Why do you think God is left handed? Okay, you left handers because he was in his right mind. But anyway, here nor there. Uh, well, the little boy looks at his father and he says, Well, you know, um, we, I, I hear this in church. I, I hear you all say uh, that, um, that Jesus ascended into heaven and he is seated on the right hand of God the Father. Well, the little boy was close. But not quite. Jesus is not seated on the right hand of God the Father, but at the right hand of God the Father. So, um, with that, Jesus has, has indeed ascended to his rightful place. Why is it important? Why do I have 68 pages of notes? Well, I want to share with you three reasons, just three. Uh, three reasons the ascension of Christ is of, is of utmost important, importance. And I want to share with you a scripture uh, that's hopefully familiar. It is considered one of the early hymns of the church. Uh, Paul writes in the letter of Philippians, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, God, God, fully human, fully, di well, fully divine, gave up his right to that divinity to, to come to earth, to be fully human and, and yet fully divine. And to, to suffer, to die, crucified to die, uh, to rise again, and then, and then ascend into heaven. And Paul doesn't leave that part out of his hymn either. Here is the ending. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In order for humanity, in order for you and I uh, to be forgiven of our sins, relieved of our shame and guilt, redeemed, restored to a right relationship with God, opening up the heavens uh, for us to have abundant, everlasting life, that is why Jesus descended to earth, and then even after his death, descended into the depths of hell, rose again, ascended into heaven. His work on earth finished. It was time for him to begin his heavenly ministry, to sit at that rightful seat as king and as high priest. So... Um, this, this fact of the ascension, though not necessarily preached often uh, today, uh, not necessarily mentioned often in, in other Sundays of the year, just this focus on this Sunday, it was preached throughout the New Testament. So another quiz. You ready? <laughs> You're like, oh my goodness. So um, what is the most often quoted uh, Old Testament verse in the New Testament? Anybody know? Y'all aren't so quick on Google, are you? <laughs> it is um, from Psalm 110. Uh, so I'm going to share that. I'm using my Bible, so it takes me a little while to get to it, and so then you can take a little while to get to it yourself. The page that's in the middle that's from John kind of messes me up a little. The Lord said, to, it's Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand 
until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Uh, the, the Jews, they, they believed um, that this was prophetic, and they also believed that it applied to King David, uh, or the line, uh, the lineage of King David. Sit in the place of honor at my right hand, till I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Imagine, imagine your enemies as a footstool, the place where uh, your feet rest. And then Paul, uh, Paul defines for us in Ephesians what indeed uh, the ascension is. I asked the people on Thursday, uh, you people, like anybody know if I were to say a sword drill, what it is? This one, she's from the south, she knows. It used to be like, you know, the, in youth group, they'd give you a verse. Because this is the sword, our, our weapon in the armor of God. And whoever got to it first, like, got a point, and I guess you won things. I mean, I think they even had, like, teams, and they competed with one another. Uh, but uh, in Ephesians... down and then like my brain was just I'll find it. My 68 pages of notes, right? It's an Ephes it's Ephesians chapter uh, 2. It talks about us being dead in Christ, but then being made alive through our faith. And then being seated in the heavenly realms with Christ through our faith, through our belief that indeed um, Indeed, Christ is Savior. Christ is God. So, if you read all of chapter 2, you'll get a, an understanding of what that means. It says, uh, uh, starting in verse 4, But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, and seated us with him. Him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ. Verse 6, for he raised us from the dead. Present tense, right? He raised us from the dead. We're still living. He raised us from um, our... our uh, being dead in our sins, sorry, my brain. And so, um, so it is crucial uh, that we indeed proclaim the ascension. It is crucial that we celebrate it uh, because we see Christ going from the risen Lord to the reigning Lord, from, from alive to, to sovereign over all the earth, and from central to supreme. As the, the three things that, that we gain uh, from Christ ascending into heaven is first, uh, Hebrews tells us that, that Jesus is our great high priest as he, see, as he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Uh, that he indeed, as a human, has, has known our sufferings, ha, has been tested. And so there he sits, the right hand of God, praying for us. You know, and, and in Romans we also find uh, that, that, that Paul speaks about Jesus being our intercessor. I mean, like, what better person to pray for you, right? So, uh, so in that, though, in Jesus being the great high priest, being our intercessor, and us being risen, ascended, and us being in Christ, right? In that, uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, like, I'm trying to find the words. Uh, us being, uh, us being risen, us being a, being a part of the ascension, we also are called to be intercessors. We are also called to, to pray for one another. We have to remember, though, while our prayer uh, is, is, is needed, while our prayer is important, it is secondary uh, to Christ. We don't take that on our own. Like We have to make it happen uh, through our prayer. But, but we find that in prayer uh, there is... Um, 
sacrifice. It is costly. Um, there, there's despair uh, and, and angst as we pray, and we don't find our, our prayers answered as quickly as we would like them to be. And so, as the ascended Christ, as our great high priest, uh, we too are given a ministry of prayer, and we are also assured of, of Jesus praying for us, uh, praying for us in that perfect way. Uh, in seminary, uh, one of um, our professors, uh, Dr. Bob Stamps, who's also dean of chapel, uh, he, uh, he spoke about the high priest interse intercessing uh, for us and um, interceding for us. Oh. And, uh, and in that, uh, he, he mentioned it's like we pray, and, and he would pray, you know, and, and Jesus, like, edit that prayer as it needs to be edited. Uh, and so, um, so that we might indeed uh, rest in the will of God. The other thing, one of the other things that we get um, from the ascendant Jesus, from uh, being uh, alive in Christ, is right-handed power. Now, um, in Scripture, uh, and, and in that time, being seated at the right hand, the right hand, what was a position of authority, was a position of power, and it was Jesus' rightful position. But again, as we are alive in Christ, we are offered that same right-handed power. And so, what does that mean? You know, I have, I, I learned something again in this. You know, I, I often uh, speak about us having resurrection power. The, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. But it goes one step further. That, that power... That power at work within us is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. That's resurrection power. That seated him at the right hand of God the Father, giving him authority. And also um, that God far above anything, any authority, and that all things are under his authority. Not just resurrection power, but ascension power. God's power. If only we would live into that. If only we would allow that to give us the boldness and the courage uh, to be those witnesses, to testify to the things that Christ has done, that Christ has done for the world and that Christ has done for us. Uh, at Thursday something, uh, several weeks ago, we, we spoke about our testimonies. And I think too often we think we've got to have all the scripture verses memorized. But no, the, the scripture, of course, is important. But we need to tell the stories of how we experienced we have experienced Christ. If you don't think you've experienced Christ, uh, then we need to talk. Because surely, uh, those of you who claim to be Christians, uh, believers, you've experienced Christ at least once. Uh, once when you responded to his call for salvation. Um, and uh, with that ascension power, uh, we find that Jesus is no longer limited to time and space, to time and place, but yet Jesus then um, in that authority as sovereign uh, can be all places at all times. And having that authority, also giving that authority to us uh, to carry out the work of redemption. Like, how awesome is that? Uh, that God invites us to, to be a part of the work of redemption. And um, at a conference, uh, Christine Kane, and it was repeated in here, she said, you know, when people ask you what your job is, like, tell them, it's to evangelize the whole world. That's your job. That's my job. That is, that is what Jesus called the disciples, blessed and commissioned them to do, uh, to, um, to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. I have... Um, a few statistics for you. I've got to find what page I wrote them down on. I'll get to it. Um, well, I have 68 pages of notes because I often, well, my brain just goes all sorts of different places when I start doing this. So to the ends of the earth. I know which slide it's on. So this world, uh, in my research, there is 17,400 people groups, and that makes up 42.5% of the world's population. The, so uh, the Earth's population is, because uh, like when I think you get percents, it just doesn't, like, it doesn't fit for me, but the world's population, 
957,369 people. It's 2019. So, if 42.5% of that population is unreached. Uh, the gospel has not uh, gotten to them in a way uh, that, um, that churches have formed, in a way that it can be spread. 42.5% is 3,215,502,094. That's a lot of people that don't know Jesus. Uh, that's a lot of people that need to hear uh, the good news that they can be forgiven and redeemed. The, the good news that they are loved with a love that is so great it cannot even be calculated. Just kind of a, a, another way to compare um, the, uh, this 3 billion number is about 10 times the population of the United States. And of, of those people groups, there's, there's one category lower than unreached, and that's 3,000 of those groups. We have resurrection power, we have ascension power, we have the power of Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of God the Father to bring the gospel. Now, of course, there's that piece, and, and we kind of get to that next week about, about Jesus sending the Holy Spirit, which is indeed what uh, fills us. Uh, it's God's presence here uh, on the earth and in us uh, that, that, that sends us forth. They were called to wait for it, uh, and sometimes we need to remember that as well. And so, um, we, have, uh, we have been invited to be intercessors, to, to pray, uh, and, and to pray uh, how and where and when, and, and, and for strength and courage uh, to share the gospel, uh, to, to pray for, for hearts that would be open to receive the gospel. Jesus ascended into heaven gives us a stand in the gap posture. Jesus ascended into heaven gives us that right hand of God the Father power. And also, Jesus' ascension into heaven gives us the holy of holies presence. The veil was torn. Jesus, at the right hand of God the Father, in the presence of, of God, and as Christ is in the presence of God in the fullness of heaven, we are as well, as believers made alive in Christ, hidden, uh, hidden in Christ with God. Uh, Andrew Murray said uh, that the knowledge of Jesus entering heaven and us taken to be in union with him, it delivers Christians, it delivers you and I from all that is low and feeble and then lifts us into a life of joy and strength. The ascension, the understanding of it allows us to learn to live in Christ. To, to uh, Have you heard the phrase, huh? not so heavenly minded to be uh, no earthly good? But we need to be heavenly minded in order to be earthly good. But, but heavenly minded, not our heads in the clouds, uh, hoping for... Um, you know, that, that golf course in the sky. That's not how I've been anyway. Um, but uh, heavenly minded, interceding with a great high priest, uh, that right-handed power and in the very presence of God. And so um, in the very presence of God, we know, we know that, um, that Jesus is with us, uh, that we are in the presence. There, there's no place that Christ, there's no place that we've been abandoned that Christ isn't there uh, holding us up and, and giving us strength. Being in God's presence is what makes heaven, heaven. And so, with that, too, um, uh, Dennis Kinlaw, another professor uh, at, uh, at Asbury Theological Sem Seminary, he said uh, that God made it possible for him, for us, to live in his presence every moment so that heaven actually begins for you, for me, right now in time and space. I've said it before, your everlasting life doesn't, doesn't come when you take your last breath here on earth. Uh, everlasting life uh, is when you invite Christ uh, to be your savior, when you acknowledge that, when you accept his love and, and forgiveness and redemption. Your eternal life begins and uh, he tells us in the Great Commission 
that he's been given that authority and that he will be with us always to the end of the age. It is a blessing to live according to the promised presence of Christ. Can you imagine every moment of your life being lived in the holy of holies? Well, actually, I got to thinking about, ooh, that's a little scary, you know? Uh, what is it that you would need to, to leave behind and, and to submit to Christ, submit to God? We don't have to wonder where Christ is. We don't have to beg him to come. He is present even when we feel uh, he seems to be absent or, or asleep at the wheel. And I know in this time of crisis, uh, there have been people wondering, where is God in all of this? But we can be confident that he is with us. As I began to think about what it meant, uh, what it meant for us to be elevated in the presence of God with that right hand power, invited to pray with Jesus Christ, I thought about, well, gosh, you know, uh, that I think we could get the wrong idea. Because being, you know, people think about being elevated, being um, better than others. But that's not what this is. This isn't about being snooty or prideful, but this elevated status assures us. It gives us confidence. It gives us confidence that we are God's beloved. I say it over and over and over again. And I was telling Sheila the other day, I want you all to know that you are God's beloved. If, if, if there's nothing else you ever take away um, from my time with you all, is that you are uh, loved, loved with the love by God, uh, his presence, his power, uh, his prayers, uh, so grand, it cannot even be calculated. And that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. It was settled at the cross. That, that's a place in history. Uh, it can't be taken back or erased. Being elevated isn't about uh, a place of, of pride. But it's about a place where we have confidence uh, that we are God's beloved. That we are co-heirs with Christ. Fearfully and wonderfully made more than conquerors. Knowing we are seated with Christ at the right hand of God the Father with authority and power can and should and ought squelch any fear that we have of living that life for Christ, of being that holy and living sacrifice, holy, set apart, not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the Holy Spirit. And I recognize, I recognize that, that as, uh, as we try to push back against the world, and I don't mean opening churches when we ought not be opening churches, I, in pushing back from the world, uh, maybe, you know, not doing those things that, um, that you know, not being unkind, not, um, not lying, and, and, and you know, I, there's a whole list, you know, gossiping and, and all of those kinds of things. And, and sometimes it's hard. You're, you're in the midst of a conversation and, well, no, we're called to separate ourselves. I'm not so good at that sometimes. But, <laughs> beloved, co-heirs with Christ, right hand uh, power. And, and Jesus intercessing, interceding for us and inviting us to be a part of that ministry. And perfect love casts out fear, and God is love. Knowing our place, elevated, our life hidden with Christ in God, it allows us to, to put our fingers in our ears and, and, and erase from our minds the, the criticism that we receive, those, those, those things that... Um, that uh, maybe uh, others have used to define you, define you not so nice. And that power, right-handed power of God, uh, the presence of God, the real presence of God, holy of holies, invited there every moment, uh, it should indeed also squelch that self-doubt, uh, squelch that self-loathing that you might indeed live as, as God's beloved. And in living as God's beloved, holy living sacrifice, taking the gospel to the ends of the earth, the, the three billion, lots of million people. And it's not just the ends of the world, ends of the earth. Now, yes, this community, realistically, this whole country, every people group has been, uh, has, has been reached with the gospel. But we recognize not all of them uh, have indeed uh, come to know the love of Jesus, uh, of our Savior. We have a job to do. Uh, and it's, it's a blessing, Right? It's not a chore. We're filled with the with the Spirit. We we've been given, uh, we've been given all that 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 the power, the resurrection power, the ascension power, the Holy Spirit, 
uh, to carry this out. Uh, so, church, we're outside of the buildings now, right? Perfect time, perfect time to share the hope of Jesus Christ. And so my prayer is uh, that you'll join me in doing that. It's difficult, but uh, we can do it. And, and so your assignment, one of your assignments this week, is to think about how we can taste, take the gospel uh, to our neighborhoods, uh, to this county, uh, to this country, to the ends of the earth. It might be supporting a missionary. We support Cheryl Daly in France, who, who indeed is, is reaching a, a group of people who have since uh, closed their minds to the gospel. Uh, it might indeed uh, be... Yeah. Margaret shared on Thursday a hat with a cross on it, and people are asking her about faith. <laughs> Maybe it's a means of, of which we... Uh, find ways, I don't want to say to advertise, but, but, to, but to offer Christ uh, in a visible way so people ask us the question. And the truth is, is you, if you uh, are acting holy and, and different, uh, then, then, um, then the ways of this world, people will ask as well. So uh, let's do it, you know, uh, and, and let's share the gospel. And, and as we are able, let's fill the church buildings and the church parking lots with people coming to know that love and not just us uh, coming to uh, feel better about ourselves. And so uh, it's your job to think about how we're going to do it. Uh, it's not just mine. <laughs> and so, uh, so let's, um, let's join in Christ with, uh, with him in prayer, with uh, that resurrection and ascension power, authority, and being in his presence, uh, knowing his love beyond a shadow of a doubt, confident, to take on our role as, as people called to evangelize uh, the whole world. We are also given strength in that meal, uh, that meal which, which Christ called us uh, to, to celebrate, uh, to, to experience his real presence, resurrection power, ascension power in the bread and in the cup. In that too we remember, we re remember him giving his life up. Uh, we remember him being, uh, uh, his blood being shed, the new covenant uh, for us, for the forgiveness of sins. And so um, as we uh, move, um, as we begin to move these things to transition uh, to the table, I invite you to uh, sing the hymn, Are Ye Able? Uh, this as a kid was always the one that I, I wrote on the, on the request form for the hymn, hymn sing. It is indeed asking you, are you able uh, to take on the task of being a follower of Christ, uh, not just a person sitting in the pew? and not just a person checking a box that says, yeah, I believe in God. So um, if you don't already have the elements with you, uh, I invite you. Uh, some form of bread and, and, and grape juice or wine, or, or if you don't have those, like water, uh, uh, this is a means by which we can do this in the most respectful uh, way as we, as we experience the real presence of Christ and his grace. So um, join in singing uh, as we begin a transition. So.
Almighty, we come to you, and we come to you with our thanks and praise, because that is the right thing. We come to you thankful, uh, thankful that you have not abandoned us. You never gave up on humanity, on your creation, uh, formed in your image, and you breathing into us the breath of life. You delivered us <laughs> through the floods. You delivered us from slavery uh, to sin and death. You, you used uh, Moses, the prophets, the priests, even exile. <laughs> And then, at just the right time, you stepped out of heaven. You took on the, the form of a slave, humbled yourself uh, into a, a human body, the, uh, the infinite, becoming finite. That, that mystery, that mystery of faith, that you came to earth, that, that you died, and that you rose on the third day, and that you are indeed coming back. That all of creation will be restored, but more than restored, recreated. A new heaven and a new earth. No more suffering, no more tears, no more death. But God once again dwelling in our midst. So Lord, we come. We pray that your Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit would come upon the gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Here and everywhere uh, that we have deemed your sanctuary as we have gathered together in unique ways. Holy Spirit, come. Come upon these gifts. Make them be for us the body of Christ. Make them be for us the blood of Christ. The body of Christ broken. The blood of Christ poured out. Make us indeed be the people broken and poured out to bring this world the, the message of salvation, the message of your love to hasten the kingdom of heaven coming here on earth. Lord, make us one with you, intercessor, with your power and in your presence, one with you, one with each other that the world might know, and one in ministry to all the world. Until you indeed come in final victory and we all feast at the heavenly banquet table. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And with that knowledge, with that confidence, um, we come to this table. And so, Lord, um, prepare our hearts and our minds. Lord, we do remember at this table that on that night that you gave yourself up for us, As you celebrated the Passover, you took bread and you broke it. And you said to your disciples, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. You also donned a towel and you washed the feet of your disciples, knowing there was one who would betray, knowing there was one who would deny, doubt that they would abandon you. Showing them what love means and calling them to do the same. Love and serve your friends, your fellow believers, your enemies. Show them that they are God's beloved. After you broke the bread, you took the cup and you gave thanks. And you gave it to your disciples and you said, take, drink. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat, as often as you drink, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these acts, we do offer ourselves as that living sacrifice for this world, empowered with ascension power through the Holy Spirit, and then sent. And so, I invite you now um, to partake in the elements, in prayer, and with respect. And if there's other people in your house, go find them and serve them as well, because we do indeed, Christ is present. His grace is here, and it, and it can bring people uh, to a saving knowledge of him. So let us uh, come and dine and feast uh, on the grace of Christ. Having sung songs of praise, having sung songs of challenge, having prayed together, Having heard the word and having, having 
feasted at the table. May you go in grace and peace. May you go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But may you go confident in the knowledge that you are loved by God, a love that's so great it cannot even be calculated. And in knowing that, take on the task. Uh, take on the task of evangelizing the whole world, uh, sharing the gospel, sharing the love of God to the whole world, to everyone, everywhere, so that disciples indeed will be made. Uh, disciples through the power of Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, disciples of Jesus Christ made, and this world transformed, and God's kingdom come. So, go. <laughs> As you are allowed out of your homes and into those places, but also I imagine there are places and people in your homes uh, that need to know that love as well. And so in that confidence, uh, may we continue to be the church uh, and, and share that good news. So 